Hi everyone, my name is Monique, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play a game called Septima, designed by Robin Hegedush, illustrated by Vilu Farkas, and published by Mind Clash Games, who are helping sponsor this video. In Septima, one to four players play as leaders of their own witch covens, competing to become the next High Witch, otherwise known as the Septima. Players will gain wisdom by brewing potions, healing patients, and of course, performing rituals, all while trying to complete the objectives in their Book of Divinations. If this is your first time playing, it is highly recommended that you start by playing the basic game, which is the version I'll be explaining how to play in this video. For information regarding the full game, refer to the sections in your rulebook with this symbol. Now let's start with setup. To set up the game, place the main game board in the center of the table with the appropriate side face up. When playing the full game, use the side of the board that shows this symbol. But since we're setting up for the basic game, instead use the other side of the board. Next, place the season marker on the first space of the season track representing autumn, and place the moon phase marker on the first space of the moon phase track. Then, randomly place one lunar ingredient marker in each space in between the moon phases, as well as one hunter pawn on both the winter and summer spaces of the season track. Also place hunter pawns on each of the huts numbered 1, 3, and 5 near the perimeter of the town, and place the hunter die near the main board. Then, place the blue triangular turn step marker on the A space of the turn step track. Place the potion board near the main board and stack the potion tokens onto their corresponding spaces according to type. Next, create a general supply of ingredient tokens, crystals, wisdom tokens, good luck charm tokens, and angry citizen meeples near the board, and shuffle the prologue cards to form a face down draw deck. Then, shuffle the six patient tokens and place them into a face down stack and draw a number of tokens depending on the number of players. On the main board, locate the six numbered town areas with a blue or yellow banner and place the patient tokens in the order they were drawn, starting on the matching banner color space of the lowest value. Then, place the next token clockwise on its matching banner color and continue until all drawn tokens, depending on player count, have been placed, which is all six tokens in a four-player game. Afterwards, set up the first trial chamber by first shuffling the witch tiles and placing them in a face-down stack next to the chamber. Then reveal the top witch tile and place it in the first trial chamber, and place the empty trial bag as well as the trial and scoring aid sheet with the trial resolution side face up next to the main board. Next, set up the Septima area of the main board by first shuffling the Septima action markers into a face down stack. Then place the top two markers face up on the two Septima action spaces. As for player setup, each player should take a player board and place it with the basic side face up. Place a suspicion marker on the space with the number two on your suspicion track and place a patient track marker of each color on the bottom space of the respective patient tracks. Players should also choose an available player color and take all eight action cards of their color into their hand, as well as their six loyal citizens, placing one loyal citizen into the crowd area of the main game board. Then, players draw two witch tiles and place them on any two spaces of their coven. Players also draw one book of divinations card, which is kept secret from other players, and two prologue cards to determine their starting assets. Prologue cards have a top and bottom section that should be oriented so that the reference numbers are on top. Then, decide your starting assets by covering either the top or bottom section of one card with the other card, so that only three assets are showing. Afterwards, gain the top bonus three times, the middle bonus twice, and the bottom bonus one time. If a bonus shows an option between two ingredients, you may choose a different ingredient each time. All ingredients, potions, and crystals are stored in the inventory at the bottom of your player board, and any gained loyal citizens are placed in the crowd section of the main board. Randomly determine the start player and hand them the start player token. Then, starting with the player seated to the right of the first player, each player places their leader pawn on any empty space marked with a gold or bronze symbol on the main board. Afterwards, give each player a player aid, and now you're ready to play. In Septima, players lead a coven of up to four witch tiles, which provide players a different ongoing ability that may sometimes modify a player's actions or provide additional effects. Whenever a player is caught by a witch hunter, one of their witches are sent to trial, and at the end of the game, players will only be able to score a different scoring objective in their Book of Divinations for each witch left in their coven. For a description of each witch's ability, as well as the Book of Divination scoring objectives, I encourage you to refer to pages 32 and 34 in your rulebook. 
Septima is played over the course of one year, consisting of four seasons, and each season has four phases, starting with the preparation phase. In Autumn, which is the first season of the game, the preparation phase is skipped, so we'll return to this phase later. For now, let's move on to the Moon phases. Each season, players complete five moon phases, following the five steps of the turn step track. At the start of each moon phase, players choose the action they'll be taking on their turn by simultaneously selecting one action card from their hand and placing it face down in front of them. In the next step, players who have chosen the same action will receive a matching bonus. So during this step, open discussion is allowed, but players are not required to tell the truth. Once everyone has selected a card, they simultaneously reveal it, keeping their card to the left of their player board. Then move on to the next step, which is resolving the chosen actions in turn order. On your turn, before resolving your action, you may take what's called a quick move, which lets you optionally move one space with your leader. When moving around the board, you must always move to spaces connected by the white line. And you may move through a space containing other leaders, but you can never end your turn on an occupied space. Then you resolve the action on your chosen card. Action cards feature a main ability as well as a matching bonus at the bottom of the card that can only be taken if you either chose the same action as another player or the action on the active rightmost Septima action marker. If neither are true, then you may only resolve the card's main action. Although, matching with either a player or the Septima marker will also make you appear quite suspicious. If you matched with one or more players, raise your suspicion on your player board by one. And if you only matched with the Septima, raise it by two. Over the course of the game, if ever your marker is in the top space of your suspicion track and you need to raise it, instead, the townsfolk confront you immediately about your suspicious behavior. At that point, if you have at least one witch in your coven, choose one to send to the second trial chamber. And if you only have one witch, instead lose five wisdom, which are the points in the game. Afterwards, lower your suspicion by one, then you may move any number of spaces with your leader. Now let's discuss the eight different actions that are part of the base game, starting with Collect. The Collect action allows players to collect all of the lunar ingredients and crystals that are adjacent to their leader. Lunar ingredients are the two ingredients on either side of the moon phase marker. Players gain one token from the supply for each adjacent lunar ingredient and crystal. You'll need these ingredients in order to brew potions and fulfill some of the scoring objectives on the Book of Divinations cards. And crystals are especially helpful because they can be spent in place of any ingredient type. The matching bonus when taking the collect action allows you to also collect one adjacent non-lunar ingredient. Next, we have the move action that simply allows you to move up to three spaces with your leader and collect one adjacent ingredient along the way. When collecting an ingredient, you may choose an ingredient that is adjacent to any space that you occupy during this action, including non-lunar ingredients. The matching bonus allows you to instead move to any space and gain one crystal from the supply. Next, we have the brew action that allows you to brew up to three potions using the ingredients you've acquired. And the matching bonus lets you spend one fewer total ingredient when doing so. There's seven different types of potions that you'll be able to brew. Three kinds of remedies that can be used to heal ailing patients who are suffering from blindness, paralysis, or infection. And four different kinds of practical potions, which each provide a different one-time effect when spent. There's a calming potion, which allows you to either lower your suspicion by two or move a hunter to any empty hut and set it inactive. A flying ointment that allows you to move any number of spaces. A love potion that lets you send one loyal citizen to the crowd and one from the crowd to the first empty space of either trial chamber. And we have ritual oil that lets you perform your chosen action as if you matched with another player. Although when using this potion, you must still raise your suspicion like normal. All potion recipes as well as their effects can be found on both the potion board as well as on your player aid. To brew a potion, discard all used ingredients to the general supply and take the matching potion token from the potion board. When brewing a practical potion, also score three wisdom immediately per potion brewed. You can use any number of practical potions immediately after the quick move or card action steps of your turn. Remedies are used with the next type of action called heal. The heal action allows you to heal up to two adjacent patients, placing their corresponding remedy potion on the patient token. If the patient has an angry citizen on it, first return the angry citizen to the common supply. Players cannot heal the same patient twice, but multiple players can heal the same patient in the same moon phase. 
After healing a patient, also advance one space on the corresponding patient track on your player board, and immediately gain the reward on the new space. Healing patients make the townsfolk quite happy, so not only will you gain rewards for advancing on the tracks, but you'll also gain wisdom at the end of the game depending on how high your markers are on each patient track. On the main board, you'll also find the hospital that is located in the town center. If your leader is adjacent to the hospital when taking the heal action, you may heal up to two patients and even multiple patients of the same type by placing potions on the hospital space. However, you do not gain the rewards when advancing on the corresponding patient track. The matching bonus when taking the heal action allows you to also gain one good luck charm. These charms can be used to reroll the hunter die during the next step, and you'll also score two wisdom for each unused good luck charm at the end of the game. Next we have the chant action that allows you to simply lower your suspicion by two. Music is a great way to calm the townsfolk, so if you match, do not raise your suspicion. Instead, the matching bonus allows you to lower your suspicion by one more for a total of three. The recruit action allows you to send one loyal citizen to the crowd. At the end of each season, a witch trial will occur, and sending your own loyal citizens will increase your chances of winning the trial and inviting a new witch into your coven. When taking this action, loyal citizens are taken from your supply and placed into the crowd area of the main board. The matching bonus when taking the recruit action also allows you to choose one crowd pick from the four options listed below the crowd area of the main board. And these options include lowering your suspicion by one, moving up to four spaces with your leader, gaining any one ingredient, or spending one ingredient to gain any one potion of any type. Similar to the recruit action, we have the plead action that lets you send one loyal citizen from the crowd directly into a trial chamber, immediately scoring you two wisdom. When taking this action, place your own loyal citizen from the crowd to the leftmost empty space of either the first or second trial chamber. If you don't have a citizen in the crowd when taking this action, you still score the two wisdom. However, the matching bonus allows you to also send one loyal citizen from your supply to the crowd area, which can be done before resolving the main ability. And lastly, we have the Remember action that allows you to perform the main ability of any action card in your discard pile. Cards played during a season will not return to your hand until the end of the season, so this is an important action to take if you'd like to perform a specific action twice in the same season. And the matching bonus allows you to also add the matching bonus of the chosen action, but you may only match with specifically another player's remember action to do this. Once all players have completed their turns, you check to see if you've caught the attention of any of the nearby witch hunters. The board is divided into six different zones that are distinguished by the color of their symbols. Each zone has a numbered hut that is connected to one space along the edge of the zone. In turn order, if at any point during this moon phase you've raised your suspicion, and there is an active hunter in the hut that is in the same zone as your leader, you must roll the hunter die. After rolling, you may choose to discard a good luck charm to immediately re-roll the die. Then, add the result of your die roll to your current suspicion level, and if the sum is one or greater, move the hunter that number of spaces along the shortest possible path towards your leader, ignoring any other player's leaders along the way. If the hunter reaches your leader, a witch from your coven is captured. Move one witch of your choice from your coven to the second trial chamber, covering any witches that may already be there. If you only have one witch remaining, instead lose five wisdom. Then lower your suspicion by one and move your leader any number of spaces. Lastly, move the hunter back to the hut regardless of whether a witch was caught. And if there were multiple players in the zone who caught the attention of the hunters, each player rolls separately. Afterwards, in turn order, if at any point during this moon phase you've raised your suspicion but did not have to roll the hunter die in the previous step because your zone's hut was empty, you escape this phase. But not for long! <laughs> Find the first zone counterclockwise with an active hunter and move that hunter to the hut in your zone. The hunter arrives inactive and won't move again this phase, but will become active in the next phase. At this point, players end the current moon phase by discarding the current Septima action marker and sliding over the left action marker to the current space and replacing it with one from the face down stack. Then, players discard their current action card to a face up discard pile to the right of their player boards. Activate all inactive hunters by standing them upright, discard all patients with at least one potion token into a face up discard pile, and return all potions to the potion board. 
Then begin a new moon phase by advancing the moon phase marker. After the fifth moon phase, move the marker to the trial icon above the track, and then the trials begin. At the end of each season, one or two witches will be placed on trial in front of both angry citizens who want the witches exiled, as well as loyal citizens who try to prove them innocent. Before the trial starts, additional angry citizens are drawn to the crowd. Check the suspicion track of all players, and for each line marked with an angry citizen below their suspicion marker, add one angry citizen into the crowd. In addition, move all angry citizens on patient tokens to the crowd, then discard each patient. Then resolve the first trial chamber by placing all citizens that are in the crowd into the trial bag. Draw a number of citizens from the trial bag one at a time, depending on the number of players, and place them in empty spaces of the trial chamber from left to right. If there are more loyal citizens in the chamber of any player color than there are angry citizens, the witch is found innocent, and the player with the most loyal citizens in the chamber wins the trial. In the case of a tie, the player with the leftmost loyal citizen in the chamber wins. The trial winner immediately scores three wisdom, and may now add the witch to their coven. If all coven spaces are filled, then you may optionally discard a witch to make room for the new one, or simply discard the new witch. During the first three seasons of the game, the trial winner must also recall two of their loyal citizens from the chamber or bag, placing them back in their supply. And at the end of the fourth season, the trial winner skips the recall step. On the other hand, if the number of loyal citizens in the chamber are equal to or less than the number of angry citizens, the witch is found guilty and is exiled from the town. No one wins the trial, and the witch token is returned to the box. Finally, end the trial by returning all citizens from both the trial chamber and bag back into the crowd. Repeat this process for the topmost witch in the second chamber, if any. At the end of the first three seasons, once all trials have been resolved, each player with at least three loyal citizens in the crowd may take crowd picks, which are detailed below the crowd area. This is done in turn order, and the number of picks a player may choose depends on how many citizens they have in the crowd. One, two, three, or four picks for three, four, five, or six loyal citizens. Keep in mind that any player who takes at least one pick is required to return one loyal citizen from the crowd to their personal supply. Once the trials have been resolved, players perform end of season steps. First, shuffle the discarded patient tokens and place them face down beneath the current draw stack. Then advance the season marker and move any hunters that are on the new space to the lowest numbered empty hut on the game board. Then reset the moon phase marker. Next, players pick up their discarded action cards and pass the starting player token to the next player clockwise. Then, players start the next season in the preparation phase, which we skipped in the first season. During the preparation phase, reveal the top witch from the stack and place them face up in the first trial chamber. Remove all angry citizens from the crowd and place one on each patient on the main board. Draw a number of patient tokens so that the total number of patients on the board equal 4, 5, or 6 in a 2, 3, or 4 player game, and place patient tokens according to the procedures detailed during setup. Next, shuffle all Septima action markers into a face-down stack and reveal the top two markers, placing them on the left and right Septima action spaces. Play continues with the five moon phases in the current season, and at the end of the fourth season, skip end of season steps and players proceed to end game scoring. At the end of the game, players will score wisdom depending on how many of their loyal citizens are in the crowd and trial chambers. Three wisdom for three or four loyal citizens, and seven wisdom if there are five or six loyal citizens. Then, players gain wisdom for a different scoring objective in their Book of Divinations for each witch remaining in their coven. Players then earn the wisdom value of the highest level reached on each patient track, scoring an additional six wisdom for each level reached on all three patient tracks. Earn two wisdom for each leftover good luck charm, one wisdom for each remaining potion, and one wisdom for each pair of leftover ingredients and crystals, and add the rest of your wisdom tokens earned throughout the game. The leader with the most wisdom wins the game and becomes the next Septima. And in the case of a tie, the player with the most number of witches in their coven wins. And that is how you play the basic game version of Septima. 
Once you've played a few games and are interested in incorporating all of the components, feel free to venture into the full game, which adds additional buildings, a new ritual board, and spell cards that feature a variety of different actions, as well as scoring conditions that players can explore. There are also additional rules for both the two-player and solo mode that can be found in the back of your rulebook. And for even more Septima content, you can try the modular expansion called Shapeshifting and Omens that introduces new animal tiles and omen cards that provide positive or negative effects to all players throughout each season. And with the Shapeshifting module, players will have the ability to shapeshift into one of their two animal forms, allowing players to retrieve their discarded cards during the season and move around the board without raising suspicion. And there you have it, that is how you play Septima. If you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, please feel free to leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I really hope it was helpful. If you enjoy content like this and would like to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you, bye.